Hey, my name is Will. Sometimes I go back and play games I haven't played in a very long time. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a game that I think is an underrated gem in the Super Nintendo's library. It's a game that I rented a few times as a kid and remember having a lot of fun with it. So today we're going to be taking a look at Maui Mallet in Cold Shadow both the PC and Super Nintendo version. Why two versions of the same game, you ask? Well, because as I learned recently, the two versions of the game are wildly different. Anyway, kick back, relax, and let me talk about the time I decided to play Maui Mallard again. So first, let me set the scene. A while ago, I was thinking about what I wanted to do on this channel. One of the things I thought would be cool would be to talk about games that are less known, underrated, or perhaps weren't well received. One of the games that immediately came to mind was Maui Mallard. The game features Donald Duck playing the role of a detective who can also transform into a ninja. It's a platformer with a lot of fun stages and memorable music. Also, since it hasn't been included in any of the Disney retro game collections, I thought it'd be a good topic for a video. So when it came time to stream the game, I decided to purchase the Steam version of the game for convenience. It was dirt cheap thanks to a Steam sale, so I figured, why not? Well, it turns out the PC version of the game is very different to what I played as a kid. So much so that I'm going to talk about both versions so you don't think to yourself, what are you talking about, Will? This game is terrible. Okay, I may be exaggerating a bit here, but let me tell you, the PC version of the game had me questioning my inner child for a bit. Anyway, let's take it from the top. Releasing on PC and the Super Nintendo in 1996, both games feature Donald Duck, both games have the ability to turn into a ninja, and both games take you through seven stages with gameplay and level design that will remind you a bit of games like Earthworm Jim. But that's where the similarities end, and now we can get to the differences. The first most notable difference is that the PC version of the game has a soundtrack that has a lot more depth than the Super Nintendo version. It was the first thing I noticed, and I was wowed by how much more detailed it sounded. Take a listen to the opening theme. So out the gate, I was pretty excited to hear better renditions of these songs because some of them are really good. So I start the game up and enter the game's first level, Mojo Mansion. So let's start with the Super Nintendo version. Mojo Mansion is a stage where you must navigate a series of corridors, elevators, and secret passageways. There are enemies like creepy butlers, spiders, and piranhas to deal with along the way with your trusty blaster. The blaster kind of reminds me of Earthworm Jim's blaster, only it shoots much slower and has the ability to shoot some questionable special ammo shots. The stage also has a really catchy tune and showcases how good the soundtrack to this game is. Anyway, you go through the stage, take out a few enemies along the way, collect some treasure, and complete this platforming challenge where Donald gets thrown around by these paddles in a really cartoonish manner. And then you just continue to the end of the stage and are given a score based on the treasure you collected. In the next part of the stage, you're doing some platforming, avoiding piranhas, and then complete a series of rooms where you are moving this tiki head along the ground by pushing a button. Also, the tiki head shoots darts at you that you need to be careful of. The stage is pretty short overall, so you'll get through it pretty quickly. The next part of the stage begins where you go through some dark corridors, take out some butlers, and eventually have to climb up to the top of the manor by being juggled by a spooky organ. Once you reach the top, you face the first boss, this weird spider chandelier thing. The boss is pretty easy to take out. You just shoot it and avoid getting hit. It's not too tricky of a fight, so it goes down pretty easy. It serves as a fun introduction to the game overall. So the PC version of the game opens in a way that feels really familiar. So at first, I wasn't really questioning anything. In the moment, it felt great to be playing something that I had a lot of fond memories of. The music of the PC version was putting a smile on my face because the theme of Mojo Mansion had vocals, something the Super Nintendo version did not have. Nobody's home. 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 
I was jamming along to the music and just going through the level as normal, but then I started to notice something. The level didn't quite line up with what I remembered the game being. At first, I thought that my memory might not have been correct, because the map changes were subtle enough. But now we come to the point where there was a significant enough change that will sum up what's wrong with the PC version of this game. You know what, I'm just gonna let this clip of me playing through the paddle section of this stage do the talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ah, oh, come on! I promise this game is magical, just... Bear with... Do I just keep perfectly falling into it every time? Childhood memories destroyed. So in the PC version of the game, you must land on the paddles and time your jump to the next one. If you don't land on the paddle at the right moment, you fall through. It's something that is not easy to do as the hitboxes for Donald are really weird in the PC version. I'm not sure how else to put it, but it feels like in the PC version, the hitboxes are either insanely massive or ridiculously small and no in between. What took literal seconds in the Super Nintendo version took several minutes in the PC version. And it had me worried that people watching were going to question my judgement. Before playing the game I was like, oh this game's great, I loved this game as a kid. And here I was, slowly losing my mind. Anyway, eventually I got through this section of the stage and continued onwards. And that's where we now come to the next difference of the stage. The PC version just continues. There is no intermission, and strangely, the treasure you're collecting doesn't seem to play a large role in the gameplay. At least, not that I could see. In the Super Nintendo version, the treasure you collect will form a score for the stage, and if you reach a certain threshold, you'll be able to enter the bonus stage to earn some lives and the password for the stage. In the PC version, though there is treasure, there isn't a grading system, and the way you enter the bonus stage is by collecting a random hidden item on the stage. Which is a bit weird. I'm guessing you probably get a 1-up at some point for collecting treasure, but other than that I didn't really see a point for grabbing treasure. The positive here though is because there is no intermission, the stage ends up being bigger as a result. And you get to see extra areas that weren't featured in the Super Nintendo version at all. Like this part where a bug makes platforms appear. This was not in the Super Nintendo version. Also, the part where you are using the organ to climb to the top of the manor, the PC version is much longer. So that was pretty interesting to see. So I got up to the boss and I was like, okay, it's the same boss, cool. This is going to be fine. Well, about that. So remember how I said the hitboxes were weird in this version of the game? Holy crap are the hitboxes on this boss massive. Avoiding getting damage was really hard. It felt like no matter what I did, I was doomed to take damage. So it became a game of spamming out all my special shots out the gate to have a chance of beating the boss. Which, by the way, most of which are questionable in terms of how useful they are. This is cool, but it doesn't seem to be doing much. Like all these interesting shots, but they're not really hitting. The boss did have its own unique music, so at least it was cool to hear something new. It took several attempts, but I did eventually take out the boss. Though afterwards, I knew this was not going to be the nostalgic playthrough I was expecting. I arrived at the next stage, the Ninja Training Grounds. This was the level that as a kid I looked forward to. This is where you get introduced to the ninja transformation. With the press of a button, Donald does this cyclone move and transforms into a ninja and gains new abilities. You go around the stage swinging around your staff and also get to fight enemies in one-on-one -on -one combat. You also get to take control of this giant duck stone statue and go crashing through sections of the stage. This was pretty fun. The stage culminates in an arena where you must fight a bunch of ducks back to back until there are none left. Though the combat as a ninja isn't exactly the game's strongest suit, this stage was always a favourite because of the music and the ability to transform Donald at will. Collecting tokens around the stage also upgraded Donald's belt level, so it felt like you were training to become a black belt. So, how does the PC version fare? Well, once again, the music in the PC version sounded a lot cooler.
The start of the stage again felt familiar, so I was thinking the stage was going to be as I remembered. But very early on in the stage, we come to another problem with this version of the game. The swinging. Oh my god. <laughs> this does not control as well as I guess the Super Nintendo version does. It's just not as lenient. So in the Super Nintendo version, I had no problem going from swing to swing seamlessly, chaining them back to back, heck, even changing direction on the same point. But in the PC version? Man, it just feels jank. It feels like the hitbox to get the swing correct is just tiny, but also the timing to be able to jump at the tip of your swing just feels off. I just kept messing it up and falling back down to the ground. There are a lot of swinging sections in this game, so this became a problem really quickly. The combat as Ninja Donald also felt a bit off. The range of your attack just feels really short, so a lot of the time you're going to be trading blows and taking damage no matter what. In the defense of the PC version, it wasn't exactly that much better in the Super Nintendo version, but it just feels a little extra off here. Thankfully though, Donald is tanky enough to withstand a lot of damage, and there were a lot of health pickups along the way, so it wasn't much of an issue. By the way, as a side note, I love that Donald's way to heal is to drink a nice tropical beverage. As a kid, I kinda always wanted to try it. It just looked super refreshing. Uh, anyway, I did have a game over here and repeated the first stage, but this time I ended up finding the secret item and was taken to the bonus stage, which is completely different in this version. In the Super Nintendo version, you are searching through a stage that has cloud, sun, and moon stage props for one-ups, continues, and fireworks. If all the fireworks are launched within the time period, you earn the password for the stage. There are no enemies in this stage, it's just a chill bonus stage that you explore that kind of reminds me of the bonus stages in Donkey Kong Country, only with less collectibles. The PC version of the game has Donald riding a unicycle through a stage where he must survive an onslaught of obstacles to reach the end. There are a number of enemies along the way that will try to knock you off your unicycle, so you just need to hang in there and survive. Needless to say, I was pretty surprised. As we were saying... Wait a minute, what is this? Whoa, 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 what the hell is this? What on earth? <laughs> Hold on, I, this was not in the Super Nintendo version. Oh yeah, and the bonus stage also gives you a cow bunger at the end, so that's something. Anyway, after some totally precise platforming... Oh sh**! This is making me feel like that journalist who couldn't play Cuphead. I got up to the training grounds boss, which had a completely unique section where you must use the special dash ability to avoid getting hit by Herne, who is Donald's love interest in this game. This ability does not exist in the Super Nintendo version at all. So, it was pretty cool to see, and I'm kind of curious why it was stripped out. It's a fun skill. Anyway, I reached the boss fight, and thankfully it was pretty much identical to what I remembered. Just get through the waves of enemies, and yeah, everything was fine. And with the training grounds out of the way, it was time for Mud Drake Mayhem. So this stage is about exploring the village of the Mud Drake tribe, who will do anything in their power to murder you. The stage is alternating between normal Donald and his ninja form to overcome parts of the stage accordingly. There are some pretty fun moments in this stage, like how Donald gets shrunk to a tiny size. The animation here really reminds me of the sort of stuff that would happen in Wario Land, so it was a stage that I really liked. The boss for this stage is an arena where you must fight a bunch of mud drakes. It's pretty fun. So, of all the stages in the game, this one seemed to have the least differences. It was more or less the same, with a few expanded areas here and there. The most difficult thing about the stage early on was the fact that I was still having problems swinging around so I had to redo a lot of the sections early on. But otherwise, things were going well. But then I got up to the mudslide section. You want to talk about massive hitboxes? Jeez. The mud here was constantly sending me back to the bottom, when again, in the Super Nintendo version, I would have gotten this correct the first time. After completing the Tiny Donald section, I reached this section which is a series of ramps that is plagued with mud drakes. In the Super Nintendo version, this section is pretty straightforward and taking out the mud drakes is relatively easy. In the PC version, however, they will swarm you and shooting them is ridiculously difficult thanks to the slope making the shooting awkward. So I decided to rush through this section and the boss room was up next, the Mud Drake Arena. Here, swarms of mud drakes will be sent at you and you must take them all out. Again, both fights are the same in each version of the game, but can you guess which one I had more problems with? It's 
enemy spam. This enemy spam! If your answer was the PC version, go treat yourself to a nice tropical beverage. Again, this was just a matter of spamming shots and making sure that the Muddrakes were taken out before they had a chance to swarm me. Once the Muddrakes were on top of Donald, it was really hard to shake them off. What wasn't making it easier was the fact that on the way up, I was also eating a lot of damage thanks to them leaping out of the mud and swarming. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Bunny hop to victory. Bunny hop to victory! I hate this. I hate this so much because I try to shoot them, but it doesn't shoot them! Like, it's such an awkward angle, I can't hit them. Dude. <laughs> it's so annoying. Yeah, good, no, good. Have, have no way of attacking them. Yeah, good. Spawn six of them. Make them stay on top of the player with, like, half a second of iframes. Good. After several attempts, I finally beat the Mudrake tribe. Now it was time for the next level, and probably my favorite one in the whole game. The Sacrifice of Maui. This is a stage where you must climb out of a volcano through a series of platforming challenges. This stage has my favorite music track in the whole game. And though the PC version is more detailed, I think the Super Nintendo version is better. I don't know, chalk it up to nostalgia, but I think it flows better. The start of the stage has you swinging around lava pits, finding secret crevices, and taking out these lava creatures that are mixing a cocktail or something. I don't know what they're doing, but I like the character design. The second half of the stage involves navigating Donald as the lava rises in the volcano. It's a mix of swinging and also riding a stone platform as the lava rises. As you complete each section, the lava rises faster and faster, making it important to get Donald's position correct. It's a pretty fun section, and it's a reason why I enjoy this stage a lot. So now for the PC version. The stage is pretty similar for the most part. The opening section is more or less the same, except thanks to the problems I was having with swinging in general, well, let's just say I was questioning my sanity a little bit. Swing! What is happening? Am I having a stroke? Why can't I grab that? Why can't I grab that? I got through the first part of the stage and was ready for the lava climbing section. But then the game took me by surprise. Instead of the section I was expecting, there was this completely new boss fight that wasn't featured in the Super Nintendo version at all. It's this weird floating head that charges at you and throws boulders at you every now and then. It certainly took me by surprise and made for a fun fight. I beat the boss and was ready to climb, but again, the game mixed things up. So I still had to climb out of the volcano as the lava began to rise. But, unlike the Super Nintendo version where you ride a platform, instead it's a bunch of swinging and platforming, which... yeah... Ah. Ah. Oh no! Uh-oh. We might have a brick wall scenario in our hand. <laughs> Please, game! Oh my god! Please, please get in. Please get in. Okay. Donald! Donald! The swing was just causing me to fail a lot of the section. And because there was now rising lava in the equation, it meant I had no time to try and make sure I was getting the jump correct. I'm making such horrendous noises, I, I apologize. But my inner child is, like, dying on the inside every time. I just miss one of these swings. Even though it's not the same game, it still looks like the same thing. And that's enough to bring me full tilt. Donald. 
McDonald, please get in the. Ah. Anyway, after several attempts and making some horrendous noises on stream, I finally made it out of the volcano and it was time to move on to the stage where we have the most differences in the entire game, the test of Duck Hood. So let's talk about the Super Nintendo version in brief. You start off by climbing a treetop-like village to get to a series of bungee jumping sections where you must navigate Donald through a maze of spikes and rescue a bunch of mudrakes who are trapped at the bottom of the pit. After rescuing the mudrakes, you then go to the boss fight where you must bait this giant toad to eat them one by one and burp out their bones. Ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. It's a pretty fun stage overall and really doesn't take too much time to get the hang of. The PC version. Oh boy, where do I start? For starters, please do not focus on the background of this stage. The parallax effect here is truly awful. The layers are moving at really inconsistent speeds, so it'll probably give some of you motion sickness. It was certainly hard at times for me, and that's coming from someone who doesn't get motion sickness. Anyway, the stage opens up with a similar treetop town, except now there is an absolute onslaught of mudrakes. And I mean onslaught. They were everywhere, so it got to the point where their voice lines were being spammed constantly. These characters are like every single 90s website in existence, or Flash website. Just a cacophony of sounds that just don't stop. Hover over a button, make a sound. Press a button, make a sound. Open a page, make a sound. Close a page, make a sound. Click a spot on an image, make a sound. I'm okay. I'm, 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 I'm fine. Mental state is normal. After a bit of climbing, I then had to use the bungee mechanic, which I was familiar with from the Super Nintendo version, to then grab onto a bamboo platform and be flung up to the next section. Oh yeah, and the mud drakes were gunning for me the whole time. There he is! There he is! There he is. Yeah! What? Yeah! Okay! Ha! There he is! The next bungee section involved a trickier part where I needed to wait for a moving platform to be able to move along. Again, this took me a while to get right because if at any point a mudrake hit me, it meant redoing it all again. After climbing to the top, I began the next section of the stage where I had the bungee attached to me at all times. So I thought, okay, well now this should be familiar. Well, sort of. There are moments where the gameplay feels like the Super Nintendo version, and then there are moments where it's normal platforming, but you have lower gravity. It's a little weird, but not as weird to the premise of this stage. See, in the Super Nintendo version, you are rescuing the Mudrakes and trying to make peace with them. In the PC version, though, Hone tells you to make peace with them, you instead decide to go on an absolute rampage through the whole village and take them out one by one. So, was this part of the stage at least less spammy with the enemies? Hmm. I don't know. You tell me. It's like almost in the fatal position. Like in a fucking men mental institution. I'm just gonna have there he is, get him written all, all over my walls in my bedroom. Needless to say, it took me a really long time to get up to the boss. The enemy spam in the second half of the stage was absolutely out of control. So now onto the boss. The boss in the PC version of the game is completely different. Though it's the same toad as the Super Nintendo version, this time you're not trying to feed it and you still have the bungee cable attached. The goal here is to navigate through the moving bamboo platform so you can line up a shot into the toad's mouth. It's a pretty neat alternate version of the fight. The difficulty was fine, so I got through it pretty easily. There was this big sense of relief when this boss went down, because it meant I wouldn't have to hear the mud drake screaming Darius! every half second. But yeah, what a weird way to make peace with them. Anyway, it was time to move on to the next stage, the Flying Duckman. So let's start by talking about the Super Nintendo version. In this stage, you must navigate an underwater stage by using your blaster as a way to propel Donald around the stage. 
It's a pretty neat way to do an underwater level and not have it be your typical swimming level. The stage also has a really nice chill soundtrack, which sort of gave me Donkey Kong Country vibes as a kid. So this stage was always nice to play. The stakes get increased by having to escape the tide that is sweeping across the screen. So you gotta go fast and navigate through a maze of obstacles. The stage then culminates in a battle with the Flying Duckman, where you are on a life raft and must shoot at the ghost. Now, I want you to pay real close attention to how well I'm doing before we jump into the PC version. See how little I'm struggling and how straightforward it is? You got that mental image saved? Okay, good. So the PC version of this stage, though it has the same setting, it plays a little different. For starters, the chill underwater soundtrack has been replaced with something more fast-paced that constantly yells MAUI at you. The track's okay, but I prefer what was in the Super Nintendo version. So the key difference here is that the physics around how Donald propels himself underwater are different. For starters, you are unable to shoot downwards to propel yourself upwards. So you need to rely on standard jumps and pockets of air to be able to go up. I don't mind this as it just means you have to be better at platforming. But the thing that makes the PC version of the stage more tricky is that you have less fine control over how far you travel when you shoot. In the Super Nintendo version, you have to shoot a few times to accelerate Donald forward, building up momentum as you go. It means you have pretty precise control over Donald and can avoid obstacles fairly easily. In the PC version, you go from 0 to 100. A single shot blasts you forward quite a bit, so for the parts that require precision, it makes it trickier to move around without getting hit. This is made even more difficult thanks to the larger hitboxes in the PC version of the game. Again, in the second half of the stage, you must outrun the tide destroying the stage. But the difference here is that the tide moves much faster and instead takes out an individual portion of the stage, rather than being something that is moving across the entire screen. I kinda like this idea better. The problem again comes down to not having fine control over Donald's movements underwater. It just makes it difficult to get to where you need to be without overshooting your target. It took me several attempts and game overs to get through this section and get up to the boss. So, the boss is the same as the Super Nintendo version. Upon first impression, you'd be like, oh, okay, cool, it's the same fight. But then after a few seconds of this fight, you come to the biggest problem of the PC version once again, the hitboxes. The landmines are ridiculously big, and if you're not shooting them down right away, you are pretty much screwed. And even if you do take them out, their explosion animation has a big hitbox that can still damage you. It felt like avoiding damage came down to a coin flip. If at any point there was any doubt which version of the game is better, this is the fight that solidified it for me. The Super Nintendo version is just far superior. I just can't believe how much easier this fight is in the Super Nintendo version. It's night and day. This whole stage took me a long time between the difficulty of getting to the boss, then the boss fight being insanely hard to fight, and failure meaning having to do the whole platforming section before the fight again, just made the stage super rough to play. Hell is that, you wanna retain things between lives? Go f yourself! Seriously, it took me an hour and a half to get through this one. Oh yeah, and you wanna know what the password for this stage is? You ready? Okay, here it is. Oh, the developers knew. They knew. Anyway, after barely making it through the Flying Duckman fight an hour and a half later, it was time for the next stage, the Realm of the Dead. This stage is a pretty cool stage, so let's start with the Super Nintendo version. The stage is a series of platforming challenges where you take elements of everything you've done so far to get through the stage. So there's plenty of shooting, swinging, and propelling yourself through gravity-defying underwater sections. Along the way, hordes of the undead will attack you, and the animations when you take them out is really cool looking. The stage culminates in a final section where you must escort the soul of Shabum Shabum whilst a bunch of enemies try to steal it. Though I'm not a fan of slow escort type quests, this didn't overstay its welcome, so it was fine. 
Okay, now for the PC version. I'm not sure what happened with this stage exactly. For some reason in the PC version, the stage has virtually no color when compared to the Super Nintendo version. Everything is gray and blends in with one another, which can make for some frustrating sections. Like take the water for example. In the Super Nintendo version, you can clearly see where the water is so you know when the water physics are going to kick in. In the PC version, I'm not sure what happened here. Either it's glitched and there's a missing graphic, or they really did just blend it in. So I was swinging around and messing up the platforming because suddenly I was slowed down because I had entered water. The stage is pretty similar overall, but the weird choice of colours and still having difficulty swinging around made this stage a bit of a chore to complete when compared to the Super Nintendo version. The stage ends in the same way. You need to escort the soul of Shabam Shabam and avoid having it stolen. But man, the sheer amount of enemies thrown at you in the PC version is ridiculous. And the special shots do basically nothing to help you out. So you have to protect the jar. Get useless ass ammo! Also, I don't know if it was just me, but for the life of me, I could not get some of these maneuvers with the staff to work. It took several attempts to get this down, but eventually I did make it to the top and was glad to be done with the stage. So now it was time for the grand finale, the Mojo Stronghold. In the Super Nintendo version, you face up against an evil sorcerer. You must hit these orbs on either side of the boss until they break. Then you must face the boss in one-on-one -on -one combat as he teleports around and throws spells at you. The fight is pretty straightforward, and again, I wouldn't say the ninja combat is the strongest point in this game, but it's fine enough and the boss is pretty fair, so it won't cause too much grief once you know what's going on. What about the PC version, you ask? Oh boy. Well, remember towards the start of the video where I said swinging fell off and was hard to get the hang of? Can you guess what happened to me a lot in this fight? Be this distressful. Oh, for f sake. It's making me really salty just how different this is. Challenge, challenge the player! Yep, lots of falling. Also, this version of the fight is a bit more involved than the Super Nintendo version. First, you must shoot the boss a few times until he takes enough damage and decides to blow up one of the crystals. Then, you must swing to the other side and repeat the process. In order to do this quickly, it's best that you also go to the edge of the stage and collect some of the special ammo. But that in itself is its own process thanks to the massive hitboxes and swinging difficulty. Are you looking at this hitbox? Look, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at... Look at this! <laughs> How is that hitting me? Eventually I did get up to the second phase, which was the same as the Super Nintendo version. But I don't know, it felt like the AI was harder here. Maybe I'm imagining it because at this point I was certainly making frustrated duck-like noises because of how many times I had died. It did take me a while, but I finally ended up beating the final boss and finishing the game. Donald has his head planted in the ground in a rather cartoony manner, as Herne gives a speech that Donald has no way of interjecting. And right when Donald gets his head out of the ground, she vanishes. Poor Donald. It's okay though, because she comes back to give him a kiss. And the game ends with a teaser to be on the lookout for Maui's next adventure, which never ended up happening. Apparently there was a sequel in development for this game, but it ended up being cancelled. After finishing the PC version of the game, the next day I decided to go play the Super Nintendo version. And believe me when I say this, it went much, much smoother. The PC version took me six and a half hours to complete. The Super Nintendo version took me two and a half. So can you see how much more trouble I had with the PC version now? Cold Shadow is a fun game. It's a rental that took me by surprise as a kid because when it came to renting games, it was really hit and miss for us. The game is a fun platformer and though it isn't a heavy hitter, it's still a fun experience that I think is a pretty underrated gem in the library of Disney games that were released in the 90s and early 2000s. You won't find this game in any of the Disney collections, so it hasn't received the same special treatment that games like DuckTales or Darkwing Duck have received, but I still think it's worth a look if you haven't played it. Just do me one favor, please play the Super Nintendo version. Well, that is unless you like getting screamed at constantly by mud drakes. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Cold Shadow. 
And hopefully this video will make you want to check out the Super Nintendo version of the game, at least. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, as it'll let me know to keep doing more. Or hey, if you know of any other games you think are underrated gems, sound off in the comments. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or if you want to see me play Cold Shadow and more, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.